Today, we're using Yule honey to make two different mead recipes. Let's get started. So this honey is from Sean Harris, who's a prominent beekeeper and the owner of Wow Keeley Honey in Hawaii. He has some really fun varietals of honey, so I saw this one, had to jump on it. Yule Blossom Honey is from Hawaii and features a butterscotch-like note that's super interesting. Per usual, I wanted to make part of this mead into a traditional to highlight the honey itself, but I also wanted to play around with it. So I started by making a three gallon traditional with the following recipe. This mead started at about 1.080 starting gravity. I am adding my Fermade O at the 24 hour mark and Fermade K and dimonium phosphate at the 48 hour mark to give this proper nutrition. I let this mead sit in primary for quite some time. I normally wait for these meads to clear up before racking, but this one was being stubborn. The primary lasted for about 25 days. I then let it set for another 25. So at the 50 day mark, I decided to rack it into a new container to get it off the old yeast. The gravity after the primary was 1.000. After racking it, I stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. This allows me to safely back sweeten and go forward with the next steps. In order to see what would work best with this honey, I tasted it and I felt like I got a little bit of a tropical mango note in it and I wanted to highlight that. So I opened up my flavor Bible, which everyone should have one of these and look to see what goes well with mangoes. It turns out that mango and ginger work well together, so I decided on that. I bought three pounds of mango chunks from Walmart and racked two of the gallons of the mead onto those mango chunks. Those sat for about two weeks and then I added my ginger. I prepared my ginger by chopping it up and blending it with a little water. I then pressed that ginger through a strainer to get just the really potent water. I added about one half cup of ginger water to this brew and then decided to back sweeten it. Since it was already stabilized, we kept a little sweetness from the mangoes, so I added a little bit of honey to back sweeten and then let it set back for a while to clear. After it had cleared, I went ahead and bottled it and that's that. Now there's still one gallon of mead that we haven't talked about. When I racked the two gallons onto the mangoes, I went ahead and racked one gallon of it into a separate container. I back sweetened it with about five ounces of Yule honey to back sweeten and then let it set to clear. Once it had cleared, I put it into a one gallon keg and force carbonated it. Now that we know the saga for both of these brews, let's see what they taste like. All right, here we are for the tasting. There's a lot happening here. I got a grand total of 10 beer bottles from the mango and ginger version and four wine bottles and then one 375 like this. And of course my keg version is right here. There's too much on this table right now. So let me go ahead and clear it off. All right, this brew is only two months old. It is bottled. If you wanna know how to bottle a brew, uh, I didn't really show it on this portion, but I have videos on how to do it. I just kinda of skipped past it because a lot of you have probably seen it. Let's go ahead and first talk about the kegged version. Kegged version's right here. It's in my one gallon keg. And uh, I'll tell you some fun stuff about this keg here in a moment. I believe this recipe is gonna be better because it's kegged. Um, what I did was I threw this keg up to 30 PSI with my little CO2 stuff right here. For about four days, I put it in my fridge so it got real cold and allowed it to carbonate faster. We should have a good pour on it. So let's, let's get a look. All right. So um, as you can see, here's the keg version. It poured out a little quickly, and that's because I did not adjust my CO2 level. I probably should have bumped down the PSI to where I was at like five or six, and then that would make a smooth, not super foamy pour, but there is carbonation here, as you can see. You can see a little bit of the bubbling there coming up from the bottom, so that means it's carbonated. I did go ahead and pour the um, regular, you know, mango and ginger version, as you can see right here. Now this brew is not the most clear in the world. You can see my hand kind of behind it. It's obviously got a little bit of a clarity problem, but I would say it's pretty dang clear. So now we get the fun part of taste testing this. Let's start with the traditional, which is just the regular Yule Blossom Honey, um, carbonated of course. 
Mmm. The um, carbonation makes it so refreshing. It's definitely a uh, 10 and percent. I mean, both of these came out to be about 10 and percent, which is pretty hot. For carbonated meat, that's pretty dang scary, but it's, it's good. I will say the honey butterscotch notes are really cool about this thing. Um, I don't, I, I kind of thought about if I were to adjust the acid balance, but I, I like the little bit of acid that is coming from the actual honey itself, a little bit there, but also coming from the carbonation. It's refreshing, crushable. When I say you can, uh, you know it's 10.5%, I'm saying that not because I feel the heat on it, but I just, I feel like you, you will feel the buzz fast on this guy. So now let's try the ginger and mango version, which again, if you go back to the beginning of this video, that was using about three pounds of my mangoes that were frozen. Um, and then of course we went ahead and added a half cup of ginger juice. The ginger is super, super apparent on the nose. Definitely a lot of that and a little bit of that mango. Ginger is strong. I might have gone too heavy handed with my ginger. Here we go. It's very um, juicy. Very like the tannin structure of this is not like a red wine or something that really clings to your mouth. It, it kind of washes pretty fast, but it's good. It's definitely heavy on the ginger side. The mango is definitely there though. The butterscotchy notes uh, from the honey are not as apparent. They're kind of being hidden a little bit from the, or by the ginger. So, I mean, we're losing that some, but I do think the honey pairs well with those two fruits. It's good, it's really good. Again, also 10.5%. I don't perceive this as 10.5%. I think you will eventually, you'll, you know, you'll feel it, but it's really nice. I would probably dial back my ginger juice to maybe a third of a cup instead of a half because I felt like a half a cup is very prominent. Maybe a third of a cup would bring that down. Other than that, this recipe is pretty solid and I'll make sure and throw both of them up here. So we got the mango and ginger version here and then we have just the traditional. Both are really good. I, I think the traditional carbonated, good on its own, no need to change anything. Maybe a little less ginger on this one, but overall, I'm very pleased. Now, I do want to show you one fancy thing. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't think this recipe would be the same if you tried to bottle carbonate the traditional version because, so forced carbonation has added some acidity to this, but it's also allowed me to, um, because I stabilized this, use the honey to back sweeten. When you, uh, when you back sweeten with a, non-fermentable sugar, it's just not the same as honey. It's not bad, it's just not the same. And I really wanted to pronounce the characters from this honey here. So I got to with this. If you want to force carbonate something and you're like, well, I don't have a kegging system at home. Look at this thing right here. This is a one gallon keg. So yes, I had to invest probably 80 bucks to do this one gallon keg thing. It uses CO2 cartridges. This thing will allow, allows me to force carbonate stuff. And what's even more cool about it, I bought, let's say that you want to bottle from this thing right here. I actually bought a lid so you can buy a bottling attachment, like uh, something like a Northern Brewer last straw, something that goes onto kegs. You put this on here, you connect your, your stuff with that, and I will be able to actually take and bottle my carbonated brew, which then I could reuse this again for something else, which is why, well, also what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna show you right now some video of me uh, bottling that right there. So this has been a Yule Blossom Honey Mead. Again, those recipes are down below if you'd like to learn how to make them. I think they're both really good. The mead is only about two months old, which means that of course, things are gonna change, get better over time, but overall, I am super pleased with it, and I hope that you will join me in the future for 
some other videos. I have lots of other recipes that I'm making, of course, and I'm excited to share those with you. So check these out, go check out other ones. They're currently on the channel. So we just hit 40,000 subscribers. We're going for 50, just as a goal. It's fun to have goals in life. So let's go ahead and keep pushing, check out those things. And I hope to see you in the future with another video. Cheers.